If you're looking for AI tools to use in your language teaching classes, this is the video for you. We've been testing a whole series of different AI tools and we're gonna show you three of the best, plus we've done a bonus one. These tools work in many different languages. Now we've tested them predominantly in French, Spanish, English, and Polish, and some of them in German. Some of these tools work in 20, 30 different languages. So you have to test them to see if they work in the language that you teach. Um, but certainly they work in a whole variety of different languages. We're not only going to show you how these tools work, but we'll suggest some ideas, things that we tried out in the classroom as well. All these tools are free, and some of them don't even need to uh, sign up. They, you can just work with them straight away. I specialize in technologies for language teachers. I really hope you like this video. If you do, please like it. Please share it with other teachers. Please comment on it. And of course, join me on my YouTube channel. I will put in a menu system so you can jump to the different parts of this video. We've thrown in a bonus one at the end. Really hope you like this. Let's get started. We've absolutely fallen in love with this tool and we've been using it for all sorts of activities and I'll explain one in a minute. Basically, you can write in a description of up to a total of 420 characters, so quite long, and then it will produce the image depending on the description that you've added in. So I asked for a description. I used this in Spanish. I wrote the description in Spanish. What we've been doing in class with this is getting the students to work in pairs and to basically think of a topic, think of the vocabulary, write the description, paste it in, and then produces an image. Then they can show their image to another group and the other group has to guess what they asked for. So in this example, it would be, did you ask for a white village? Did you ask for mountains? Did you ask for a church? Did you ask for flowers? Did you ask for trees? Did you ask for it to be a beautiful day? Did you ask it to be a scene from Spain or Greece? Did you ask there to be a church there and a bell tower, etc.? Produces loads and loads of language. So let me show you how this works in action. So here we've got a description, it's in Spanish, so the words, the kind of key words would be things like montañas, iglesia, torre de reloj, ayuntamiento, plata de pueblo, uh, antiguo castillo, flores, macetas, etc. And then basically, after the description has been written, and as I said, we've been getting our students to do it in pairs, they can write it in word, they can then simply copy it, and then jump over and then paste in. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't matter how many times you repeat the description, it will produce a different image each time. So if I paste in that same text and click on generate, and notice that I can choose all sorts of different styles, but I'm just gonna do digital painting. Click on generate, it's gonna produce that picture for me. It does take a while to generate the picture, as you can imagine, it's got to produce all that 3D art. In the old days, this would take ages. And there you can see the result, um, completely different picture. I pasted in exactly the same text. We've got the sunshine, we've got the church, we've got the white village, we've got the flowers, etc. Now, actually, sometimes it does miss out a couple of things. It's quite interesting in that way, but it does include nearly everything that I've asked for. And of course, as I said, a nice activity afterwards would be to get students then to guess, well, what did I ask for? Did you ask for trees? Did you ask for a white village? Now we've tried all sorts of things with people doing scenes from beaches and cities, etc. A Couple of nice things about this tool. Of course, you can download the image, you can share the image. Notice also that you can kind of get rid of this kind of here. If you click here, it just kind of eliminates. And so you get a nice clean, picture. Really, really recommend this website. I think it's great for language learning. It would be no exaggeration to say I'm using this tool every single day. What it does is it allows you to paste in text and then it will read that text out to you, but in very realistic, natural voices, even with accents from all different languages around the world. So if I click on start for free, you can come up to the top here and choose the language. Now I've chosen Polish, but I want you to see that there's just a mass of other languages, including all sorts of accents in English. And for each language that you choose, you're gonna have different voices as well. So it's a great way of being able to hear something read out in an oral, or almost 
uh, you know, authentic accent, native accent, but also the variety of different uh, voices. So for example, if in this one, I'm gonna choose Marek. So what I've done in here, I've pasted in a text in Polish. You just click here and then paste in your text, okay? So, if, so all you need to do is paste in the text. I'll just delete that text and paste in a shorter version. There it is. I now, obviously, I've already chosen my um, person and my language. I just click on the button here. Iga Świątek jest polską tenisistką, która urodziła się 31 maja 2001 roku w Warszawie, stolicy Polski. It would be no exaggeration to say I'm using this tool every single day. What it does is it allows you to paste in text and then it will read that text out to you but in very realistic, natural voices, even with accents from all different languages around the world. So if I click on start for free, you can come up to the top here and choose the language. Now I've chosen Polish, but I want you to see that there's just a mass of other languages, including all sorts of accents in English. And for each language that you choose, you're gonna have different voices as well. So it's a great way of being able to hear something read out in an or, or almost uh, you know, authentic accent, native accent, but also the variety of different uh, voices. So for example, if in this one, I'm gonna choose Marek. So what I've done in here, I've pasted in a text in Polish. You just click here and then paste in your text, okay? So if I click on this button here, let's just play a little bit of the text. This is a great tool for pronunciation as well. So I've written in three words here in English and I'm gonna change over to in Australian English. So we'll do Australian English and we'll use William. And let's just quickly hear these three words being pronounced. Accommodation. Fragile. Interesting. So this is excellent. So great for pronunciation work. This is something I do a lot in Polish. I put the phrases in and I can hear them being read out. I'm just going to show you now quickly an example in Spanish. So I'm going to paste in some text in Spanish. Obviously, you're going to click up here, change the language to Spanish. So we'll do Spanish from Spain. We've got all these different accents. I'll choose this one here, Alvaro. And then uh, I'm going to click here and play the audio. Un pueblo en Andalucía en las montañas. Okay, absolutely perfect. Really great tool to work with. And also, it seems to be that there is quite a generous free offer. There is a kind of limit per day, but it tends to de depend on the language. Because I've noticed that in English, I seem to be able to do lots and lots of stuff. You, do, you get a certain amount every day for free. Now, there are other tools that I use for pronunciation. And in fact, there's a tool called wordwall.net, which is perhaps one of the most popular language learning apps on the internet for teachers with more than 30 games. And that also allows for audio now. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, because it's also good for grammar exercises and vocabulary, then there's a link on the screen now that you can watch. I'm gonna move on now and show you another AI tool that I really like. Just a super quick 20 second break from the video. If you like what you're seeing, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free material. You can click on any of the links here at the top or just scroll down. There's lots of videos on the front page. I specialize in using technology in language teaching. You can also find out about the courses that I run. At the moment as well, if you sign up to the newsletter, you get a free 14 part course in how to use technology and language teaching, lots of ideas and suggestions. And there are no tricks, that really is completely free and I send you a video about every three or four days. And if you sign up to the newsletter, you'll get updated with all my latest blog posts, my new videos, the courses I run, and the free webinars that we often organize. Thanks ever so much, let's get back to the video. This is absolutely fabulous. It's a teeny plugin, just takes a few seconds to add in that allows you to talk to ChatGPT. Uh, you can set the language. We're gonna to speak to it in uh, English. So in fact, let's do something in Spanish. So we've obviously got all these different languages that we can work with. So we're gonna slide it down to Spanish and see what we can find, Espanol. And then I'm just gonna to start to talk to ChatGPT. So I'm gonna click on this button here to start talking. And when I wanna send my message, I press on the space bar. And so I'm just gonna check whether or not ChatGPT can speak in Spanish. 
¿Puedes hablar en español? Uh, ¿Me entiendes si te hablo en español? Sí, puedo entender y hablar en español. Puedes hablarme en español y estaré encantado de ayudarte con cualquier pregunta o consulta que tengas. Now all I did was simply click here and I'm just going to come down and show you. So I'm using Google Chrome and if I come down to extensions and then look at um, manage extensions, you'll see that I've got an extension here called voice control for chat GPT. And in fact, if I just search for that and it's so easy to set up, let me quickly show you on Google where you can find that. So you want to do a voice control for chat GPT for Google Chrome and then jump the uh, advertisements and simply come down to Google voice control for chat GPT click on that now obviously I've already got it uploaded so it's actually saying to me do you want to remove it but you will just click on that button there and it will then add it in immediately there's nothing else to do when you open up chat GPT in the future once you've added that you will see that you have that control now I'm just going to point out one small thing Coming back to ChatGPT, occasionally when you load it, it doesn't offer you the choice of different languages. And so just as a little tip, sometimes what you need to do is you just need to refresh the browser. And if you refresh the browser, suddenly all the languages become available. And of course, you can use it in other languages. I've been practicing my French with it and my Spanish and of course English. I haven't dared to try out my Polish yet, which is a language that I'm studying now, but I will do. Now, I've actually done an advanced video on using ChatGPT for teachers with some really nice ideas, perhaps a little bit different from what a lot of other people are doing, um, showing you some of the things that we've done with ChatGPT with our students. And I'll put that video on the screen now. The next one I'm going to show you is just a bit of fun. It can be nice for a lesson. Um, it can be nice for sharing, etc. It works in lots of different languages. I've only tested it out in English and I just did an exercise where I got students to upload pictures, see what memes were created and then to try to get them to explain to me and to the rest of the group what they think the meme meant. So it was a kind of just a little warmer up exercise, but it kind of worked well because it created a lot of fun. I'm just going to um, click here on upload image and I upload the image from my computer and I'm just going to grab a picture here that I've got uh, in my section on pictures. If I look under Russell, I've got some images I'll use, for example, let's use this one here. I'm going to click on it, open, and then I click generate meme and it's going to generate a meme based on my image. So it's not a super profound language learning tool, but it can be nice for a warmer or an, an, uh, an activity at the end of the lesson, or just a bit of fun uh, to bring into your lesson at some point. It's a novelty thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the art of talking without actually saying anything. Okay, pretty good. <laughs> And in fact, my experience of this tool, uh, in terms of the memes, has actually been quite good fun now. As I said, what you can do as well is afterwards is save it or share it. Uh, lovely, simple tool that could be really good fun to use in the class uh, with your students. Okay, really hope you like that video. And as I said before, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. We specialize in training teachers in using technologies in language teaching. Loads of content on the front page. And of course, there's also all of the links there at the top of the screen. Don't forget, if you sign up to my newsletter, you'll get updated on all the latest blog posts, all the latest courses, the latest videos, and of course, the webinars that we run are often sponsored by um, software companies, educational companies, etc. And you can contact me from the website if you'd like me to do some training with you or with your organization. And thank you very much. I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now about AI technologies.